Hello and welcome to GMBN Racing, everybody. It's myself, Rich Payne, and I'm joined by our Mr. Olympics, Ollie Beckinsale, of course. Now, 2023 XE season review. Eight races, eight different country, and a whole lot of wild racing coming up. Ollie, first up, thanks for joining me, mate. Good to have you back having again. Me. Right, a season of highs and lows for most of the riders out there, but I feel like it was defined or, or standards were set by two riders in particular, Puck Pizza and Nino Scherter. Yeah, and, and coming from two different ends of the kind of experience and age spectrum, Puck Peters are stepping up from under 23, first season in elites and winning the XCC and XCO titles, podiums yeah. galore. And then Nino Scherter, where do you start? You know, ninth overall title yeah. and breaking the all-time men's XC record yeah. with 34 wins and then taking a 35th. So one legend, one newbie. Become, maybe soon to become a legend. But we got so much to chat about from what was an absolutely jam-packed season. So, uh, well, let's dive on in. Right, Ollie, let's kick things off with key moments of the season because it, there's a lot of them. Now, starting things off, back in the day, things would be dominated by a couple of different yeah. riders. This was the biggest spread. 13 different male riders were yep. across the podium, top three, and 10 different women, which is sort of the largest we've had for a long time. Yeah, and we could see it all year that there was a dominance feeling. We talked about Nino Schurter, Julian Absalon. It was almost like, well, who's going to win and who's going to take the, you know, the, the minor placings? This year, every race, we had multiple winners. We had different podiums. We had a podium in Leo Gang with the top three in the men that didn't feature on the podium in any other race. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it, it just made it so much more interesting. I think the strength in depth in men's and women's field has, has never been seen like this. You're right. So we had six different winners across the eight rounds for the men and we had four different winners across, across the eight rounds for the women as well. Obviously, let's go back to Novi Mesto, the first round of the season. Pidcock didn't yes. even know he was really going to be there. Comes yeah. out absolutely swinging. So Thomas Pidcock, Olympic champion, mixing road racing. We're seeing that in the men's and women's this year is this multidiscipline rider coming and doing road, cross, mountain bike, and not necessarily doing every round. Yeah. Um, Pickock's one of those. He wants his Olympic champion. He wants to defend his Olympic championship in Paris, but he needs to focus on his gridding. Yeah. So therefore, he needs to do X amount of races. Um, turned up at Nerva Mesto, smashed the short track. Which wasn't even entered for, right? Was, so yeah. it wasn't even a rider pulled out. He got the call, got started, in, dead started at the back, won the short track, and then and won the XEO. So doubled up in the first yeah. round. So really setting his stall out. Then disappeared yeah, just for quite a lot of the gone. races. Yeah. You know, a bit of road racing, like the Tour de France yeah. and various little small races do. like this. Yeah. <laughs> Comes back later in the year and wins again. So he bookended the season with, with two wins. That's it. Moving on, we had sort of another key I think Nino Lenzerheide, home race for him. Unbelievable. What an atmosphere. Clenches the most wins. Most male beats wins, Julian Absalon. Beats yeah. Julian Absalon. That was his 34th win, and it's been a long time coming. You know, for for a a, a rider with such a, a win rate, yeah. it took a long time to finally get that 34th. Well, that thing. that comes back to our broader podium. There are more potential yeah. winners and more people that can contend, right? And you know, not content with just getting that 34th, he goes on to make it 35, right? Exactly. And First gets another one. Yeah. And then we had yeah, Puck Peterser, who the overall winner in the women's, but um, a different approach. She yeah. was just really consistent. She won the most individual races. She won three rounds. Yeah. But then coming into it, good in all the short track races yeah. um, and really dominant. Her, her worst result was seventh. And an unknown coming into the season. She is, she comes from cyclocross. Yep. Yeah. A relative unknown coming into this. Yeah, she was an under 23 champion before, but that's you know, but no kind of elite performances. Yeah. So coming in this year and winning the overall first year, that's an impressive start. Yeah, right. So let's move on. And then we think, you know, the overalls have been decided. The season is done. But what, what do we think really decided the overall in the men's we'll start off with? So in the men's, it was so scrappy. Um, and it really, it came down to the last round, you know. So Nino was looking quite dominant, had a little bit of a wobble. He was sick mid-season, which affected um, the latter part of the season. Yep. Um, coming into the last race, you're thinking, yeah, the guy is so consistent. How would it ever be a problem? But he actually had a, an absolute shocker in the final race in Mont Saint Anne. And looking at her, was leading at one point and actually was riding to the overall. But and then punches galore. Yeah. Nino rode back through and just hung on for his it, ninth title. Yeah, it truly did go down to the wire, down, down to, to the, the final wire. round. And really, we hadn't even thought of Flukinger all 
all season to take that overall. He'd always been there. Yeah, he had a strong latter part of the season. It was Jordan Saru was riding strong all year, so that was great to see him back. He won a race in snowshoe. Yep. Um, his first World Cup, actually, he's been world champion, but that was his first World Cup win in snowshoe. So he was coming in as the kind of, if Nino had a bad day, Jordan could take the overall. Yep. Everyone forgot Mateus, but he came through, cracking race, and unfortunately, it was the flats that kind of did it for him. In the women's end, Putt Peters, are, like we said, sort of an unknown coming in, but absolutely stormed it. Yeah. Stormed it from start to finish. And, and I don't think anyone expected that. But so consistent. You, you, with her cyclocross pedigree, under 23 background as well, you'd think that she's a good chance of a podium, maybe a win. Yeah. But to win the overall in, in, in both XCC and XCO, unbelievable. Yeah, that's it. I mean, her XCO results were three podiums, a fifth, a sixth, a seventh, a second, and a third, I believe. Yeah. Just unbelievably consistent like, all year. Yeah, didn't miss a beat. No. Uh, and just so, I think she's going to be the, the woman to beat yeah. in every race. What was good as well, Mona Vittelmanala coming through second part of the season. That's it. So we've got these new riders, these younger riders started coming through. And, and again, it's that broad and strength in depth. That's in it. The Do you know what, race. Uh, sort of a bonus one I liked was, was Luca Schwartzbauer coming through. Yes. Schwartz power, as I call him. Unbelievable. Dominant yeah. in the short track. Yeah. And we kind of almost started to pigeonhole him as a short track rider. Yeah. But actually, fourth overall yep. in XCO. Yeah, a second in Lear Gang. So he's starting, we're starting to see the bigger short track specialists using their gridding, because the short track grids the XC yep. race. Um, they're coming through and then they're, they're, they've been able to do, you know we've got power over 20 minutes. Oh, he's got power over, yeah. it's, They're starting to extend that. Yeah. Um, and well, yeah, Schwartzbauer and Aldridge, Charlie yeah. Aldridge. Yeah, I think with tracks becoming slightly more technical and maybe less but they're still endurance based, but obviously yeah. these these short, sharper efforts, people like Schwarzbauer are able to, to well, use that to their to their advantage. Yeah, and the racing get like I say, the strength in depth, the different winners, the mix of tracks is suiting this close yeah. racing. That that's the exciting bit and of it me made, this year. Made for an amazing season. One hundred percent. With, with such a heck of a season behind us, let's. I want to focus on a few things we liked because there are well, there's actually more than a few. There's a lot, and I want to talk about the courses. I really think we hit the nail on the head with courses this year, and yeah. courses getting more technical. Yeah. Not a bad thing. Definitely a good thing. And it's actually splitting that field apart a bit. It's no longer just a slog fest. Yeah. Technical abilities required. Places like Mont Saint Anne, Leger. Yeah, and we saw Val de Soleil was a kind of highlight for me. There was some really technical drop ins, dusty, you know, really hard. Not Proper people, texture. Hardly anyone riding an A line on one bit of the course. And then we see Nino Schurter just attacking into that section yeah. and actually splitting the front group and him and Haffley going away to be one second. Yeah. But the race split in the tech. Yeah. And then the hardest course of the year, even in the dry Mont Saint Anne at the final. Oh, that's ruthless. In the wet. Yes. I've ridden in the wet and it still gives me nightmares. <laughs> but that is, we just saw La Lorna Lecomte yeah. splitting the race, attacking the descents, and riders, and we saw Puck Peters are struggling yeah. in the conditions. Well, that's, yeah. I mean, I see Puck actually practicing in knee pads a, a lot of tracks throughout yeah, the year, yeah. which I, do you know what? It's a smart move. Yeah, and it's short. I like it. Yes, yeah, good. XC, we always want that balance. It's it's a real mix between um, climbing ability, technical skill, endurance, speed. Skill. Yeah. But this year, we want the technicality has risen up a notch. Yeah. And actually, it's getting to the point now, if you cannot ride technically, like not just okay, yeah, you've like, got to be good. Really, really good. Yeah. You're not even in the ballpark. And you? and this is sort of brought on a new school of riders, right? 100%. So we've got people like Dubo, Charlie Aldridge, Grio in the men's, Mona Mitterwalner, Puck Peterson, of course, coming through. Yeah. And it's, again, it's, you've got this real nice mix between some young guns. And I think Charlie Aldridge deserves a, you know. He's a, an honourable mention. An yeah. honourable mention. Still under 23. He went back, but he's re decided to ride elite this year. Uh, and, and working his way up through a great short track rider. And he's using, like Schwartz power, using that short track gridding to yep. his advantage. I mean, he was leading Mont Saint Anne up the first hill, oh. riding technically. Technically, he's 10 out of 10. Yeah, he's very good. And then he's using it, he's using his start position, using the skill on the descents, hanging on in the climbs, in a relative sense, yeah. um, and getting some top 10s. And, and we're seeing some amazing results this year and a real mix. I love that bit. Yeah. Do you know what? Another thing I'm, I'm really liking actually after the season was there was a few comebacks almost like riders that have done very well in the past. You kind of, they dipped off the radar a touch and they've come back. Victor Koretsky. Koretsky was one. And yeah. Rebecca Henderson. Yeah. So Henderson, a great 2022. Yeah. Um, started the season slow. Started I think. the season slow and then started to come back through. She had a bad end of the season last year. 
coming back through and with a podium again this year. Yeah. So that's great to see. Koretsky. Koretsky, that was the comeback of the Despite year. Despite his little bit of gel rage going on. Gel rage, but we saw the world was a turning point. Yes, yeah. But he was, he had, he was a World Cup winner in the past, decided to go back to a kind of mixed road program, which he's still doing a bit of, but come back this year with, with Specialised. Um, and at the end of the season, start the season was struggling with grid position a bit because he had to work his way back through. But then a winner in Leger yeah. and then won three short tracks on yeah, the race as well. Yeah, he's got the power. I think we're going to see some, some strong things from, from the pair of them. And actually, Henderson, we open next year's racing with two rounds in Brazil. Henderson getting her first win in Brazil in 21, I believe. Yep. So, and Koretsky... There was a, uh, again, it's Olympic year next year in Paris. Yeah. So, yeah, he's going to be want to be on it. There was, I digressed a bit, but there was a test event in, in, on the course this year, uh, and Koretsky got the win in that. So, he's right back in the mix again now. But his short track racing, the last three races, oh, he unbelievable. Was hot. <sighs> right then, Ollie, that's a lot of things that we did like. We're going to have to take a little bit of a negative turn, and, and let's have a look at a few things that, you know, maybe we weren't so keen on in this 23 season. Um, I think, yeah, the two that, Punches. Yeah. It's a lot of punches. There was a lot. Like, you like, think, how's that still happening? And like, that's part of racing, you know, and it's with the XC side, people are looking to use the lightest kit possible. Always. You know, it's power to weight, so they're using like light, light kit, maybe taking a few risks, not using inserts possibly, that yeah. sort of thing. Thin sidewall tires. Thin sidewall tires, but there was a lot of flats. We saw Pickcock, two flats in snowshoe, yeah. cost him a, a, a possible win there. Yeah. Tears for the week after, possibly cost him the overall. No, yeah, I mean, that's the big one right yeah. there, isn't it? Um, but uh, yeah, and we saw Nino Scherzer having to fight back a couple of times for some flat tyres. So I think they people need to start thinking, well, it's, again, it's the XC and it's part of the whole tech side. What? It's that balance between reliability and weight. But yeah, a lot of flat. And it goes in hand with the things that we did like, the more technical tracks. Yeah, so, so it's it, it really, it no, exactly. Matthew Van der Poel, brief appearance at World Champs, yep. crashed out. And then sort of just yeah. sacked it off, really. Yeah, so Van der Poel, I mean, unbelievably, he, you know, road world champion. He was trying to do it all at the, at yeah. the Worlds. He won the road world championship, possibly the biggest race of the, in the week. Um, went to the mountain bike, crashed out on the first corner. I like seeing him racing the XC. It yeah. adds a real big, he's, he's probably one of the best races ever. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, and, uh, but mountain bike, he loves doing it, but it's kind of a bit on the side. He wants to have a pop at, at Paris Olympics mm. next year. Um, but it was a shame for him to crash out of the world, and then as a result of that, kind of was a bit. He, he it didn't was just appear. a bit. Yeah. yeah, it didn't appear in the next no. two races. Um, Pickcock was involved. It'd be nice to see Van der Poel. We want to see that battle, mountain. right? I want to see the battle yeah. between them all, so we get in the mix. There also seemed to be quite a bit of illness going on throughout the year, whether it was sort of COVID popping its little head back up again and affecting, or just general illness. Yeah, we the saw stresses of racing. More illness than normal affecting races. Leger was a kind of real hot spot for, yeah. for riders, especially in the DH and, and the XC. We saw um, Pauline Foron Prevost missing the short track uh, and Nino Schurter. So, and as a result of that, it affected the rest of their seasons. You know, if you race, yeah. and it's a, it's a hard schedule, back-to-back -back races, a lot of traveling, um, and that, that illness can take people out for quite yeah. a period of time. So we don't like to see people ill, we want to see people consistently. Fit, healthy race. and fighting, right? That's it. And the last but not least, XC short track. I love XC short track, but I I just wish sometimes the tracks were maybe a little bit more spicy. Yeah, it's a real, it's a hard balance between if the course is too hard, yes. it just splits to bits and there's not, you don't get that. It becomes an XC like, race almost. Yeah, exactly. But, but we need some technicality. I, Snowshoe is an interesting one. It was a big lap and some people said it's not a short track, it's more of a small world XC. I loved it. Yeah. You had some really techie descents. You had some hard climbs. The racing still stayed together. Yeah. So Evie it, Richards doing a last couple of lap attack and hanging on. I thought the racing was cool. So yeah, yeah I, I'd like to see it get a bit more, bit more technical. But that, you're right. That race sort of does go to show that if you throw some technicality to it or a little more technicality that you can still get close racing yeah. because that's the draw. The, the short track has such good close racing, but yeah, it's awesome, sometimes yeah. I just would like to see an extra feature or two in there to maybe challenge or split the riders a little bit here or there. Yeah, but there's been some cracking racing this year, head to head. I remember yeah. the last race in Mont saint -Anne, had in, in men's and women's, right down to the wire. The men's race in particular, six guys going elbow to elbow yeah. for the last climb. I mean, it's like, it's good Friday That's, night. Yeah, <laughs> it definitely is. Okay, Ollie, as we sort of draw to a close, much like the season has as well, yeah. Who was your standout rider? Who sort of surprised you? And I want to know, who, who are you picking to watch next year? So, the obvious one in the women's, Peter's a, a surprising everyone. You know, she's a fantastic rider, but winning overall 
both is a surprise. Honourable mention, Mona Mittelvana. Yeah, definitely. Stepping up, two wins in yeah. the back half of the season. So those are my top two in the in the women. In the men, Schwartzbauer. Yeah. Unbelievable. And it's and, and Aldridge. You know, yeah, I think two. Aldridge is a is a definite honourable mention there because I think he start you know, I wouldn't say he started slow, but he definitely came on strong yeah. at the end. And those Cannondales guys have got it so switched on in there with Haffley and that as well. Yeah, and it's that mix, it's the bigger short track specialist stretching it out for XC, mixed in with then the pure climbers. Yeah. Um, I think that's the interesting balance depending on the course. So um, 100%. yeah. No, I mean I'm those, gonna, those are my standouts. I'm gonna throw Pauline in there. Now she's you know, these seem like obvious picks, but Pauline has essentially been there or thereabouts all season. I think with Paris next year, yeah. I think she'll really be looking and to and be on it. I think they're going to Luana, be Luana, yeah. Luana, of a, course. A cracking season with two wins. but In the men's, like you said, Charlie Aldridge, definitely a, an honourable mention. My pick for next year, I, I genuinely think Koretsky. Yeah, Koretsky and, and Pickock. Yeah. So he was... There was he won two races in the world, yeah. so that's let's call it three wins. So, so he is yeah. the winningest rider of the season. Yeah. So I think that's going to be a, a one yeah. To if go they to the commit, wire. if they commit to an entire season, I think those those guys and girls are going to be on it. But speaking of entire seasons, if you want to check out the full UCI calendar for obviously cross country, downhill, and enduro, it is out now. You can check it out on GMBN Racing or on any of the UCI socials. Uh, but from us for now, I think that's it. Stay tuned. Obviously, we will be doing a full season preview for 2024 closer to the time. But from me and all now, it's uh, goodbye. Thanks very much.